Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and today I want to talk about the art of combining capacitors. I'm going to talk about parallel wiring, wiring in series. I'm going to talk about how to split up a dual capacitor into multiple capacitors. So there's a capacitor for the compressor and one for the fan, and I'm also going to go over how to combine multiple capacitors into just one. So let's just jump right in and start with the parallel wiring. So I'm sure most of you already know this, but you can combine multiple capacitors. So I'm going to start with parallel wiring. For example, let's say you need a 20 microfarad capacitor, but on your truck you only have two 10 microfarad capacitors. You can combine the two to get yourself a 20 microfarad capacitor. And there's no harm in doing that. Like it's not going to be bad for the operation or anything. To do that, all you'll need is jumper wires that you can create yourself. Just take a piece of wire and put connectors on either end and put one jumper from one side of the capacitor to the other and then take in the next section right here also put a jumper on any of the spades and to the other capacitor. So this is how parallel wiring would look like. Basically all I'm doing is combining these two capacitors. So two 10 microfarads into one 20 microfarad capacitor. So let's take my meter and just double check, set it to microfarads. And as you can see, 20 microfarads, and of course it's plus or minus 5% on average. <clears throat> so that is how you would get yourself a 20 microfarad capacitor. Let's say you needed a 25. You can actually add another one by hooking up another capacitor. This is a 5 microfarad capacitor. And you would basically put jumpers from one of the capacitors to the next to kind of continue the series here. Although this is not series, this is parallel wiring. So now I have three capacitors hooked up, a 10, a 10, and a five. That's what it would look like. And if we check it with my meter, we should get about 25 microfarads. And there you go, 25.31. So we successfully created 25 microfarads. So if you ever needed that, you could use it in the field. Like I said, there's no downside to doing this besides them taking up more room. So that's how you do parallel wiring to combine capacitors. But let's say, what would this look like in the field? Let's say you got a 60 microfarad capacitor this big guy right here. And on your truck, you don't have a 60, but you do have two 30s, 30 by five. So first off, let's see how this dual capacitor would be wired. So on a normal AC unit, generally the wiring will go something like this. You'll have a wire going to the herm from the compressor. You'll have another wire going to fan from the condenser fan motor and another wire, which is pretty much the common or the L2 coming from the compressor and one from the fan. So this will be your typical wiring setup. So in order for you to take two 30 microfarad capacitors and turn it into a 60, you would basically transfer these wires to one of the 30s in the same positions. Okay, so I transferred all the wires from the 60 microfarad to the 30 in the same places, the herm, the common, and the fan. So I'm trying to create a 60 by five out of two capacitors that are both 30 by five. So I just need to combine the compressor part and not the fan. So we're not gonna touch the fan terminals at all. All I need to do is put a jumper between herm 
and Herm on the other capacitor. And then one more jumper between common or C. And the other C and the other capacitor. So it would look like that. And with this setup right here, I basically created myself a 60 by 5 microfarad capacitor. So if we check it with my meter, I'll put one lead on common, the other one on Herm. I should get 60 microfarads or somewhere close to it. And right there, we got 61.5, and that falls within the range of plus or minus 5%, so that's good. We just created ourselves a 60 by 5 microfarad capacitor. And let's just do one more example. Let's say you're replacing a blower motor, and that blower motor has a 10 microfarad capacitor. But on your truck, all you have is only 5 microfarad capacitors. So this is a typical capacitor setup. You'll have two brown wires going to it. In order for you to combine two of the fives, you would need to take the brown wires, hook them up to one of the five microfarad capacitors. Doesn't matter which wire goes to which terminal section. And then you would wire them up in parallel with each other to get you to the 10 microfarad. And I've done this quite a few times before in the field. What you can do is zip tie them together or take a metal strap and put them together and just tie them onto some wires or onto the blower motor housing. And you could just leave it like that. They can run like that for years. Although I like to just come back and replace it with an actual 10 microfarad so there's not two of them together like that. But like I said earlier, there is no harm in leaving it like that. So these two five microfarad capacitors get you the 10 microfarad. And just to double check, let's put my meter leads on and see if we have the 10 microfarads. Ten. And right there, 10.25 microfarads. So we successfully created ourselves a 10 microfarad capacitor. And when you're combining multiple capacitors like this, sometimes you're going to run out of the terminal spades. In that case, you could just use splitters to get you more connectors. So for example, see how this wire has a double you can put one of these connectors on which is pretty much going to be a connector like that so once you slide it in you can put another wire to there there's also connectors that are like this and there's splitters that look like that that you can hook on to one of the spades and if your connectors are insulated that you're putting in a lot of times they won't fit by each other you can just take and bend this like that so you get a better fit. So if you're running out of terminal spades, you can also put these splitters on there to get yourself some more room. Okay, let's move on to combining multiple capacitors into one. So let's say you go out to an air conditioner that's really old, you open it up and the thing has three capacitors in there. It has two 15 microfarad capacitors, which are wired in parallel, like we went over previously, to get you 30. And then you got a separate capacitor for the fan, which is a five microfarad capacitor. So you can actually combine all three of these into one dual capacitor instead of replacing each one individually. So 15, 15 gives you the 30 for the Herm and five for the fan. So you would put the new capacitor in and I like to just go wire by wire. First of all, you wanna remove the jumpers and keep them for later use whenever you have to combine some capacitors in the future, right? Keep those. You can take the extra capacitor out of the picture for now. And now you are left with just one run capacitor and another run capacitor for the fan. This one's for the compressor. And then what you wanna do is take the L2 or the common coming from the compressor, put it on the common and take the other wire off of the capacitor for the compressor and put it on Herm or basically this would be L1 
So you're done with that one too. As for the fan capacitor, you would take the wire that comes from L2 or from the common and put it onto the C, on the dual capacitor here. And you'd put your other wire onto the fan terminal on the dual capacitor. So it would look like that. And of course the wire colors will vary from unit to unit, but that setup will basically remove our combined 15 microfarad capacitors and the 5 microfarad capacitor and just leave us with one dual run capacitor, a 30 by 5. And I don't know why you would want to do that, but if you would want to split the dual capacitor into two capacitors, you can do that as well by pretty much doing the reverse of what we just did to combine all of these into one. And last but not least, we have wiring in series. So if you wire capacitors in series instead of parallel, it actually cuts the microfarad rating down instead of combine it like the parallel wiring does. And I don't use that method too often, the series method, but once in a while it does get me out of a pinch. So let's see an example of this. Let's say you're replacing a blower motor that has a five microfarad capacitor, but you've been replacing blower motors all day and you're actually out of five microfarad capacitors, but on your truck, you have 10 microfarad capacitors. You can actually combine two 10 microfarad capacitors to get you a five microfarad capacitor. And you would do that by wiring the two 10 microfarad capacitors in series. And this is what that would look like. You would put a jumper wire between one capacitor and the other. And then you would take the two wires, they're normally gonna be brown wires, off of your five microfarad capacitor that you're replacing and put one wire on one capacitor and the other wire on the other capacitor like that. So this is what it would look like. And if we measure that with our meter, As you can see, we got exactly five microfarads out of wiring two 10 microfarad capacitors in series. So if you're wondering how that works, to figure out the end result, what the end microfarad rating will be from combining two capacitors, you actually have to use a formula. And that formula is capacitor one times capacitor two divided by capacitor one plus capacitor two. Or you could just try a couple different combinations to see what you get. So let's try one more. Disconnect all my wires. Let's try hooking up two 5 microfarad capacitors in series and see what we get. So I got them hooked up just like we had the 10 microfarad capacitors. We'll stick our meter leads in and see what kind of read we get from this. And as you can see, we have about 2.5, 2.6 microfarads. So even though it seems like it's half of one of the capacitors, that's really not the case. We're actually using that formula that I mentioned before. And to prove that, let's just do one last example. Let's combine a five microfarad with a 10 microfarad, which will give us 15 total. So if we go by the logic of it being half, it should be 7.5, right? But that's not true, because you have to use that little magical formula to get the end result. Let's see what we will get with a 5 and a 10 wired up in series. And as you can see, with this combination, we're actually getting about 3.4 microfarads which goes by that formula. Well guys, and unfortunately, all good things come to an end. That is all I had on capacitor wiring, how to wire them in parallel or series or combine them or split them up. I hope you found this video useful. If you have some other tips on this topic, how to combine capacitors, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time. 
And for those of you still here, I have a really good burn remedy for you. So if you get burned, this remedy works really great. And I got this from my aunt. I was talking to her about a week ago and she was saying that one time when she was a kid, she was like about nine years old, they were using a pressure cooker and they thought it was done. So my aunt went ahead and tried to open it and it wasn't opening. So she forced it open and all the steam that was built up in there just came blasting out and burned her face, her neck and her shoulders. And by using this remedy, she had no scars at all, like no spots left from that burn. And what she did when that happened, she actually used rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. She was telling me to get a higher percentage, somewhere from 70 to 95%. And if you actually wash down the burn with some water and then use a cotton ball or just pour some right on your skin, like if it's on your hand, you can just pour some alcohol right on the hand and just kind of rub it in and let that stuff air dry, it actually cools down the burn and prevents the skin from blistering. And she was saying that even if you have some blisters, if your skin is starting to bubble up, you can still take like a cotton ball and start wiping that stuff down. And it can even cure skin that is already blistering. So if you already have blisters, those blisters can actually go back down and the swelling will stop. So that's a really awesome burn remedy that I learned recently and I already got myself a bottle of this rubbing alcohol that I'll keep around just in case somebody will get burned in my family. But my aunt did warn me that if you have severe burns, if you're seeing meat, like raw meat already, your skin is burned off, then you don't want to use alcohol on that. So only for minor or mild burns. Severe stuff, you're going to want to go to a doctor or get yourself some more serious treatment. So there you have it. Hopefully knowing this quick little fact will save you someday.